Welcome back. This week, paleontology. What is paleontology? Hmm. Who knows? Do you know? What does that word mean? Well, paleontology is a branch of science, just like geology or astronomy or biology. It's a type of science. And paleontology means the study of ancient life. Paleo means ancient. Ology means the study of. Paleontologists are scientists. They're people who dig up and study fossils. What's a fossil? Hmm, all these, all these cool words we're learning all, all at once here. A fossil, well, a fossil is a part of an ancient living creature or thing which has been preserved in stone. And paleontologists, they study fossils to learn more about these ancient creatures that lived on our planet. You can learn a lot by just looking at uh, the remains that are left from very old creatures and turned to stone. Creatures like <gasps> Orthoceras, crinoids, armored fish, or trilobites. All of these ancient creatures that lived in very very ancient seas on the earth or creatures like Eurypterids, in other words giant sea scorpions. There was all sorts of cool incredible creatures that lived in ancient Paleozoic oceans. Here's a actual fossil of a Eurypterid. This is a Megalograptus. He had huge grabbing pinchers. Or creatures like the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were incredible. And all we know about them is simply from studying the fossils that people have uh, dug up and put together. Dinosaurs. What were dinosaurs, really? Well, dinosaurs were incredible. They were majestic. They were terrifying. Dinosaurs were a group of extinct reptiles, which included the very largest land animals ever to walk on the earth. And they lived a very, very long time ago. We'll talk about what this word extinct means in a little bit. Let's talk about how long ago this really is. The world has existed for a very long time. And ancient life looked quite different from the plants and animals that we see today. This time is so long that it's hard to even understand. So let me try and help you understand how old the Earth really is. So, from what scientists have found, from the evidence they've found, they believe that the Earth uh, was formed initially around four and a half billion years ago. Okay, and formed from, from space rocks and asteroids and, and minerals colliding and collecting and kind of turning into a planet at the beginnings of our solar system. And over billions and billions of years, for the longest time, there was not almost nothing going on on the Earth. It, it was more or less barren with, with all strange oceans crashing and, and uh, with volcanoes erupting but, and no plants or anything on, on any of the land. Uh, all there was was bacteria or single-celled organisms for billions and billions of years all the way up until suddenly about 500 million years ago okay so for the most most of the time it was just just bacteria in the ocean and then 500 million years ago suddenly we reach the Cambrian period where suddenly it was like an explosion of all sorts of new incredible creatures and life, uh, like those Eurypterids, the giant sea scorpions, or the, the Orthoceras, and all sorts of other creatures uh, started to evolve. Big multicellular organisms, plants began to grow on land, and all sorts of creatures uh, began to evolve. 
Then we reach the Mesozoic. This is the age of the dinosaurs. And then the Cenozoic. Now, this is a very, very long time that all this has happened. All the time, this is geologic time. Time long enough for rocks to form, for continents to move. Now, finally, right here at the end, this is 10,000 years, this Holocene epoch right here. People and societies that we've built, that everything that we see in our cities and houses and everything we see today only appeared right at the very edge of this time scale. We are right on the razor's edge right here, okay? And maybe right back here, that was like when the, the pyramids were built. And now we're right here. So this is a very long, long time. Uh, this period right here is where life formed. And it's broken down into more segments. Let's look at these a little closer. And here are the three main uh, eras of ancient life here. The oldest one is the Paleozoic, which means ancient life. This was when trilobites and the giant sea scorpions and all sorts of armored fish lived. Suddenly, there was a big, gigantic extinction right here. And we've got a new era, the Mesozoic, which means middle life. This is when dinosaurs came about. Uh, <clears throat> right here, there was another massive extinction, big dying off event. Uh, and then we have the Cenozoic, which means new life. That's the age that we live in. Now, since I just told you all of that, what's wrong with this picture? Do you know? Well, I hope so, because people should not be in this picture. People and dinosaurs never lived at the same time. People and dinosaurs lived so far apart from each other that this is completely impossible. And uh, yeah, this is just a painting from a, a fictional book that I like called Dinotopia. So of course it's, it's not real. Uh, because of course people lived here. But 65 million years ago, that was the last dinosaur. So people and dinosaurs do not live at all in the same time. Anyways, let's try to remember these different ages of ancient life better by listening to one of my favorite songs. A song about the Mesozoic. And I used to watch it on an old video, a VHS tape uh, like this. Turn off that music and go to bed. Give me Last night I had a crazy dream I fell out of my bed I missed the floor entirely I fell through time instead Through yesterday and history And unrecorded time A hundred million years flew by To Mesozoic times The all were very strange The dinosaurs were everywhere In every shape and size They walked the plains and mountains They even filled the skies Give me a Mesozoic mind Bring me away from all mankind You can keep your sense
and monsters fill the sea. Almighty Stegosaurus clad with armor down its spine. Raise their Camarasaurus and others of our kind. I hid behind a wall of rock with Allosaurus Ward. Corinthosaurus ran away, escaping hungry hordes. The Plodocus took just one step and made the forest shake. I did not want my dream to end. I didn't want to wake. Give me a Mesozoic mind. Teach me to learn from what I find. You can keep your Cenozoic, but I'll take that. to that that word i was gonna bring up again uh from before what does extinct mean when a creature is extinct what does that actually mean well extinct means when all members of a certain group die so dinosaurs are extinct scientists notice certain points in the fossil record where huge numbers of creatures died like i was talking about here there was a massive extinction. And here, too, all sorts of creatures died and then they were, their fossils disappeared. Well, the dinosaurs are extinct. And 65 million years ago, something killed the dinosaurs. And for a long time, paleontologists and scientists had a very hard time understanding why. Why did the dinosaurs die? It was a mystery. The scientists thought maybe, was it, could it have been volcanoes erupting all around the world and maybe the volcanoes changed the atmosphere, caused the earth to heat up? Maybe that killed the dinosaurs. Maybe, maybe, or maybe it was a famine. Maybe the, maybe the volcanoes blocked out the sun and it caused all the plants to die since all the plants eating dinosaurs didn't have anything to eat, then they died, and then the meat-eating dinosaurs died. Or maybe it was something else. Maybe it was maybe it was a virus. Maybe it was a, a, a disease that killed off all the dinosaurs. The point was, for a long time, scientists didn't know what it was that wiped out all of these incredibly huge creatures. Until they found something, a key clue iridium scientists found a layer of rare radioactive metal deposited right at the layer uh, where the dinosaurs fossils disappeared and this rare radioactive metal is really found commonly only in one place and that's in asteroids in space so scientists came up with a theory that it was an asteroid that came hurtling toward the Earth at incredible speeds and smashed into the Earth. And this incredible shock would have caused all sorts of havoc. It would have instantly vaporized any dinosaurs that were nearby, within probably several hundred m miles even. Uh, but then uh, it would have shot pieces thousands and thousands of miles and rock would have shot, shot all the way back up into space and then came come raining down all across the the globe in tiny little meteorites called microtectites dinosaurs would have been running for their lives they would have been terrified they would have been <clears throat> trying to escape and hide but it would have heated up the atmosphere scientists believe it would have caused worldwide 
wildfires all around the world almost all at once and it would have blacked out the sky with all the dust and all the tiny meteorites coming down and scientists were looking they were looking for a, a, a crater that could have caused this giant meteor uh, could have been could have been created from a, a, a meteor this large they were looking for a long time and finally they found one in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico all the large creatures at this time would have would have been wiped out and the dinosaurs that were near the explosion would have been instantly vaporized but for other dinosaurs all around the planet it would have been a much slower terrifying demise as the as all the plants uh, were burned up they would not have any food left if they were able to survive the heat of the initial blast uh, they would have slowly simply starved to death and eventually the skies would have cleared <clears throat> and all the dinosaurs died but that left room for the small creatures that were able to hide in tiny tunnels and because the dinosaurs died off it allowed mammals to start to, to, to reproduce and take over the planet and that's where we came from it was these first mammals that survived so thanks to the dinosaurs dying that's why we can be alive right now but wait wait mr. K what about what if some of the dinosaurs actually did survive what if like they were able to to hide like the mammals and what if they were still alive today well guess what some of them actually did survive a few of them and their descendants are still living with us today but I'll talk more about that maybe next time I hope you enjoyed my story about how the dinosaurs uh, died off and I hope you learned a few new things like some maybe some new words like paleontology or fossils or Mesozoic or extinct for the rest of the lesson uh, you can kind of res respond any way that you like uh, but for example if you have a favorite dinosaur uh, you can draw a picture of it if you like and label it. I want to see you write the dinosaur's name if you know it. Uh, but if you don't, if you really kind of don't have a favorite dinosaur, you can find one you like and do that. Uh, you can also go to my website and I'll show you how to do that in a minute again. And you can explore some of the dinosaur links that I have for each of the grades. To get to my website, you can go up to the top and click on a new tab, and you can search in Google for Markham, M-A-R-K-H-A-M, Wix, W-I-X, and you can press enter, and the first result is my website. Now you can probably get to it from Seesaw too in the assignment, I'll put the link as well. But here we are. Now for example, if you're in kindergarten, go to kindergarten, you can look at all of these links here. Dino all these dinosaur links here. Uh, now if you want to watch the rest of that movie with the dinosaur song, this is pretty old, so some of the information is not as good anymore. Science has really kind of progressed. Uh, since this was made when I was a kid, but it's still a pretty cool movie right there uh, There's a cool dinosaur game, and there's all sorts of activities and stuff here And then also if you're in first grade uh, Similar things here and also in second grade There's a few more things here now. I'm not sure if all of them work I haven't checked all of them in a while, but you can explore them if you want now Let's say you added you clicked add response on the assignment uh, well, you can draw a picture of a dinosaur, for example. I like a lot of dinosaurs, actually, but I want to draw a picture of... Well, let's see what I'll draw a picture of. I'll cut, I'll cut to when I'm done drawing, <laughs> and then I'll write its name, and then you'll see. All right, there's my finished dinosaur. Uh, it is Brachiosaurus. So now I can type his name... And uh, I'm basically done. Move it around, resize it, and uh, maybe add some, maybe add a little bit of a background if I want, or not. It's okay. And then I can click submit. Now, if you don't want to draw a dinosaur, you could you could do a different extinct creature too if you want. You could do any kind of uh, any kind of ancient creature that you like. 
Or you can just tell me some things that you learned about in the lesson too, if you want.